So here's the movie review for The Hilltop Eyes, 2006. So The Hilltop Eyes tells the story of a family driving through the Nevada desert as they are suddenly preyed upon by cannibalistic mutants. This was actually the first Hills of Eyes movie I have seen. I saw it in the theaters. And this was a really a brutal film. I mean, there's a rape scene, there is a suicide scene, and just weird mutants, cannibalistic mutants. This takes the story and the style of the original Wes Craven film in a very modern direction, in a very amped up direction, and a much more gore filled direction but it holds on to all that gritty exploitation very disturbing side of this story and it really maintains that feeling throughout the film movies like last house on the left and the hills of eyes the original ones are certainly made to be shocking they were made make a statement at the time they were made to push the envelope of what could be done in the 70s this film really holds on to that still maintains the core storyline of this family driving to the desert and they get picked off and i would say one by one but really in one scene half of the family is taken out within about two minutes of each other and that really has a sense of brutality to it and a sense of sick to it that really can turn your stomach especially with the way they kind of of advance the sexual assault of side of things and you don't really see a whole lot so far as the actual act in this one which i'm thankful for i don't need to see that but they also add an extra detail with this whole breastfeeding scene and it really just makes this whole thing that much more icky disturbing that much more sick and there's something about holding on to that style of the original film that really isn't explored too much in modern horn especially what was modern in 2006 which was all about torture gore and making things look really nice and shiny as far as remakes goes let's make it look better than it did but keep the same storyline this one really does hold on to what the original hills have eyes was known for and what it was made for i also think this version does a little bit better job with that whole thematic element about taking normal people and pushing them to be barbaric that was kind of the approach of the first film, as well as the original Last House on the Left, which is taking these civilized, normal people, putting them in this horrific situation where they are against as far evil as you can get. What is going to drive them to become like those people? The original film, I always felt like it was a little bit shaky with that, because if someone is, you know, assaulting and killing and eating your family members, I don't really think it really speaks anything on you as a person rising to a, the occasion and interacting some violence on these people but maybe that's just me this film actually takes a little bit more time kind of exploring that was setting up this whole not really a confrontation but a divide between ted levine's character and aaron stanford's character to where ted levine's character is kind of the typical american man he's a veteran he's the cop He's burly. He wants to drive across America. And I look at directions. So that's why I, mean, I know where I'm going. He's that type of guy. And Aaron Stanford is very much of a character that is very more business type. He's necessarily not the one to get into a fight in a bar. And there's this little personality clash with him and his father-in-law throughout the film. And that really does set up the journey that Aaron Stanford's character is going to have to go on. And it makes that thematic journey that goes on from this civilized, very tamed person to somebody that literally has to murder a ton of these mutants and save his baby and kind of extinguish this horrific situation. And by the end of it, it will make that journey more satisfying. And it makes it a little more clear what the film is trying to tell you. I mean, the original, that character, I always call him... 80s mustache man really just have to kill mars because he's left with no choice he's got to save his kid mars is going to stop at nothing so he just sits there and bashes his head in or maybe it was with a knife i can't really remember stabs the crap out of this guy and the film just freezes on his face as he realizes what he has done that's the ending and this one 
he not only saves his baby, he also takes out every single mutant he comes across from. In his little nuclear testing town, I just think that's Hammer's home that messes a lot more. I think it's more of a satisfying scene of the third act. As well, you get to kind of enjoy the violence that's done upon these mutants a little bit more. Where the first film kind of leaves you with that, that pit of your bottom of your gut. Where this one, although you have it throughout the entire middle act of the film, you get a little bit more of a satisfying third act, a little bit more of an upswing on your emotions by the end and just watching every single one of these mutants get theirs. I really like the casting of this film as well. Of course you get Ted Levine, absolute legend, Buffalo Bill himself. He's great here, although he's got a smaller role. Aaron Stanford is someone who I always liked since Nikita. I mean, he was great in the X-Men films too. He was great in 12 Monkeys, but he's really good in, in this film. Even though the film and Ted Levine's character is kind of pushing you towards this opinion that he's kind of a wuss, he doesn't really feel that way. He just feels like somebody that has a different ideology, a different look at life. He doesn't really feel really quite feel that way. He doesn't really feel as a helpless character, weak of a character as the 80s mustache guy from the original film. I think part of it is because of Aaron Stanford's performance. He just have a little bit of attitude that he can bring to it and even get other greats like Catherine Keener, like these actresses that we've seen over and over again. Uh, life of me, I can't remember her name. Vanessa Shaw, I believe the chick from Hocus Pocus. This is a cool, a little well-rounded cast. Even though we really don't necessarily get performances per se as far as actual characters out of the mutants, I think that all of them are done very well for their screen time presence as well. And a lot of them, you will have recognizable actors as well that you can kind of see underneath the makeup. And being an Alexander Aja film, I hope I'm saying his name right. Of course, we're going to get some Carnage candy. But this is a funny one to talk about as far as the gore. Because a lot of gore in this film is uh, inactive uh, on our hero's protagonist. It's very hard to watch sometimes. I mean, when you watch a new mom that just had the whole breastfeeding situation just gets her head blown off. That's not satisfying gore. That's effective gore. But like I said earlier, you have this whole third act to where Aaron Stanford's character, as well, the two, the brother and sister, they get a little bit themselves as well, going in and taking out these mutants through various violent ways. And that's where you get that satisfying carnage candy. You get to see pickaxes through people's eyes and American flags through throats and theirs. A whole pit of body parts that Aaron Stanford wakes up in. This is really, really a heavy, gore filled version of The Hills of Oz. I think it's all for the better for it. And finally, I think this film is directed and shot very well. It's really hard to make the desert look awesome. Of course, it has its own appeal. It can become very visual blame after a while. Ajan, again, I'm hoping I'm saying that guy's name right, does a great job at breaking up the way that he shoots certain scenes and really ramps up the tension. This does follow the template of the original film very well, but the way that it's shot so different that makes it feel very unique. Even though beat by beat we could establishly say this film exactly the same as far as where we start, what we go through throughout, and where we end up at the end. It feels like a very different journey just because the way that he frames certain things that he paces certain things out from where big bob goes and find the gas station attendants and you hear that guy in the distance and he's kind of like looking around what's going on here it's a wide shot from the back and everything but you feel like you're straight along with that levine's character the way they had a little crater area with all the dump cars from all of the victims is a really cool added detail that we didn't get to see in the original film. Even down to the third act where we get into this little nuclear 
town, I mean, the original was a cave with a bunch of Texas Chainsaw leftover memorabilia hanging around it, which was effective for that film. This being a whole town that these mutants have kind of made their own. And there's these decrepit houses and all of the decor in these houses. And you even got a little section with these two little kids and a baby cribs. It fleshes out their world just within five or ten minutes with no dialogue. It's just done in a really creative way. That's something I really enjoy about this remake. But it goes in such a unique direction with the mutants, with this towns, and how violent that it gets. And without tension fill, a lot of this gets before the big explosion middle act where half the family dies that it really does stand on its own. But overall, it's an awesome remake. I would have to say it's kind of better than the original one, honestly. Just for the fact that, you know, the original story was about a father banishing his messed up son to the cave or whatever and that all that started and this one is based on like something can actually happen <laughs> with nuclear fallout which i like that story line story was better than the original one so yeah but if you haven't seen this movie definitely check it out I highly recommend it it's one of the best remakes out there so, yeah, I hope you liked this video. Please like it. Please subscribe. Check out Twitter page and have an awesome day, guys.